Hey there, this video is going to be a bit different. Uh, I received a question uh, in the comments and it's complicated enough where I don't think I could really answer it in a reply, but it's simple enough that I think coding up uh, everything in real time is a bit overkill. So what I'm going to do here is I already have coded up the, the notebook and I'm just going to talk, talk through it. The question was on the uh, financial package for matplotlib, which is something that's actively being developed and changes iteration to iteration. So it's already changed from when I, I first did that video maybe a couple months ago, and I'm sure it's going to change in the, in the future. But the question was how to access the uh, underlying objects in that plot and may, perhaps make use of them, how to extract the, uh, the data uh, if you wanted to pull out, if you calculate a moving average and, and pull it out, how to pull it out of the, out of the graph. Now, I think it's easier just to do a pandas data frame, calculate it there, and use that, but you can indeed get it out of the graph, so we'll do that. And a second question was, how would you be able to use technical indicators on these graphs to calculate various things? And now, I'm not a technician. Uh, I don't really believe in technical analysis, but uh, what I'm going to do is create kind of a, a toy problem where we look at where a moving average crosses uh, a Bollinger Band. So we're going to take the lower Bollinger Band and look and try to calculate where the moving average crosses that from below. Because obviously it can drop from above, come down uh, through the band, and then come up uh, up from, from underneath. And while that is a root finding problem, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, there are some difficulties with it in that if you're using it to backtest the data, um, there might be hundreds and hundreds of, of these potential crossings in your data set. So we're just going to use a brute force method to search for these and pull out those various various what what may be technical sig signals for you. Again, I'm not a technician, so really uh, this is for pedagogical purposes. I would not actually trade off of this. If you have your own system and you want to use something, you use the math methods to pull out your signals, so be it. But then, you know, again, uh, uh, be careful doing that. So let's just jump into a notebook and uh, I'll, I'll talk through it. Okay, these are the imports we're going to need. Here's our uh, matplotlib finance library here. Uh, we're going to need time delta and stuff for, for various things, so I pulled that in as well. Importing the data, pretty straightforward, just the pandas data frame. And just to keep the plots uh, a little bit more manageable, what I'm going to do is, for this initial section at least, truncate down the data to the last uh, 60 points. I think this data set is over 7,700 points long, so I'm just going to chop it down. Um, the I have to change the uh, uh, date column here, which is interpreted as a string by pandas into date time objects. And then the mat, uh, the finance uh, package requires the index to be the date. So I changed that there. Okay, let's come down here and look at this. So one of the questions, well, here's the plot. Here's a candlestick plot and I put on two moving averages. Here, here's the command that does that. Uh, it's just a plot. We plot, it, plot our data frame. Uh, I have type set to candle and then the moving average. Um, I have a 10 and 20 day moving average down here. So one of the questions was how to access uh, the underlying figure and axis um, in this plot. Now this is a relatively new addition to the library. As I said in the intro, this is acti actively being developed, so things change. So by the time you see this, this might be different. I don't think this existed when I first did that first video on this, um, this library. But what you can do is say a return fig equal true. And that's going to return two things. One is the figure object and a list of the uh, axes. Now, I, I have already poked around uh, in here. And in fact, let me just print it out uh, just to show you. So print axis list. See, uh, there are two particular, there are two axes in here, one and then this one over here. So what I did is I already, I split them out of the uh, list into their own objects, axis one and axis two. Now, I also poked around inside to figure out which is which, and it turns out axis one, where is it? Axis one here, where I, I pull out the uh, child objects in there, is the one that contains the these lines, and axis two contains these candlesticks as a series of matplotlib patches. So that's how you would get access to that. So here I've uh, looked for the children, I pulled out the... Um, I pulled out the lines here. I really don't need these uh, this child, these children objects. I just wanted to see what was inside of inside of these axes. 
So here are my lines. So if I come down here and I just print out what these lines are, uh, I have a list of two lines. So if I come down here and I look at, I pull these out of these uh, this list, I have my two lines. I could change one of the colors to black. So uh, line one gets changed to black. Boom, uh, pretty straightforward. I can come down here and I can actually get the data out of the, these lines. I don't know why you would do this. I would actually do this in a pandas data frame. But if you wanted to get the, uh, the, the x, y values that are literally plotted in this graph, uh, that's how you would do it here. Again, I don't really see the point, but um, if you need to do, need to do so, um, that's how you would go about doing it. And let's comment that out. And just to show you what's in this axis uh, two, let's print that out. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that make it up, but you can see here, here are the uh, rectangle, rectangular patches that make up the candlesticks. So if you needed to go in and change something, customize something, that is how you would go about doing it. So I'm gonna customize that, or comment that out. And now, and now uh, let's go over and answer the second part of that question is how to calculate where crossovers occur. So as I said in the introduction, we're going to use a moving average and a Bollinger Band uh, as our, our signal. And specifically when the moving average crosses the Bollinger Band from below. I just kind of making this up uh, again, as I said before, not a technician, don't really believe in technical analysis, but this is how you would calculate it. And so I'm going to do this within pandas rather than trying to plot things within the graph here and pull things out. I'm going to use the pandas rolling function and I have the documentation links here, uh, the mean and standard deviation. So the mean is pretty self-explanatory. So we calculate the rolling average. Um, I calculate a 10 and 20 day uh, rolling average just to show you how it's done. We're going to use the 20 day because that's what we're going to use to calculate the Bollinger Bands. And now the Bollinger Bands are basically just the rolling standard deviation, um, which I calculate here, which kind of gives you like a, a percentage. And then I just adjust that to be back onto the, the, the main plot. So again, I truncate the data. I just created a different um, data set here. And down here, we plot that. Now the map, the, the, the finance package for matplotlib has the ability to add in other, um, other other lines. So I'm adding a plot here and it's the lower Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band and the 20 day moving average. And then just as before we plot the um, the actual candlestick chart. So this is what this looks like. Uh, the crag ear lines here. This is the upper Bollinger Band. This is the lower Bollinger Band. This one's the uh, moving average. So in this plot, our signal would basically be here because the moving average crosses the band from below. Uh, here it crosses from above, so this is we're not interested in. Here it crosses from below and so on. So the utility of this is if you want to do a back test across many um, years of data, you might want to find a way to programmatically determine these points. Obviously here, since it's such a, a small range of time, you can just eyeball it. So how do we do that? Well, as I said before, and I'm kind of tired of saying, this is a root finding problem. We want to subtract the moving average from the Bollinger Band. We're calling that our function. And we want to find the, the, the values of X or the, the date values such that this function is zero. So the problem here that kind of prevents us from using, uh, effectively using at least, our other algorithms like Newton's method, is the fact that this is kind of kind of a random a function and over you know large spans of, of dates you, you could potentially have hundreds and hundreds of crossings so those will converge to a single root so it may not find all of them well for such a small data set that's not too bad so what i'm d did here is i pulled the average out of the pandas data frame the lower bollinger band i plotted them here uh so plot the average plot the the uh Plot the band is a black line, plot the average is blue. Here's my function. And now I am just going to basically slide a window of points. That's probably not the best way to phrase it. I'm going to take two consecutive points, x sub i and x sub i plus one. Um, and I'm going to look to see if there's a sign change between those and just slide uh, i over the, 
the range of the data set. So I just do that with a for loop here. And uh, depending on which uh, order I look at, I can pick out whether the line is crossing from below or above. And this is crossing from above to below. And since I'm not really interested in, the, in this, I just kind of pass through this, this if statement. And uh, again, this is not super efficient computationally, but when I find a value, I'm just appending it to in, into this, um, into this uh, list called index, IND. And that's all, it is, all there is to it. I come down here again, I plot all the, the values I found. So as you can see here, uh, where are we? Found one here. This is a slightly different scale, so it doesn't agree. It's not identical to this plot, but so found one here. This crosses the other direction, found one here, found one here, and that's really all there is to it. Cool, so that's it. Um, let me know if there are any questions, and if you find uh, this type of, of video where the code is already written, and I just kind of describe it uh, useful, or you prefer me actually coding things in real time. The advantage of something like what I did here is, um, I didn't script it here in this case, but I could uh, script it so that the, the uh, explanations are a little more clear, uh, but again, let me know. So until next time, I will see you.